libraries today doing for our communities. We know nationwide that most libraries bring an economic return on the dollar of about six dollars. This article is a little bit more down to the meat of what's happening today. Um, brings in play about five or six different libraries where downtowns have actually been revitalized by, by bringing the library back downtown or rebuilding the library downtown. At the time of the, the study, um, we actually at that point put a site selection committee together and they were looking at eight or nine different locations. I'd have to say that just like the flood impacted many things in this county I and mean, in the in the city particularly, our plans uh, were sort of shifted to this downtown, this idea of an anchor in the downtown area as a result of some meetings we've been holding both with city and, and county officials. And this article is a great article talking about how libraries have become so much more today than a place that you go to check out materials. You go um, right now to do all kinds of e-government filings. You do all kinds of learning on computer skills if you don't have them already or honing your, your computer skills. It's a destination for families for programming. Uh, these are the kinds of increases that we're seeing in the use. We had a 10% increase over last year in computer use. Our programming is up. We had 1,400 people in the summer reading program this summer. So the space is definitely not meeting the needs of our community. And this is what we want to study. What are those needs? What is the community input? And what would a new building start looking like? Although this bond that we're asking you to approve tonight will not actually cover the plans of that building. Misconception out there that I just want to share with you to get this straight, and you can pass that out as well. There's a lot of talk about what this building is going to cost, and as my board said publicly more than once, we haven't talked about that yet because we don't know what the building is going to look like. We don't know exactly the size. We've had some basic plans drawn up, and a number that's floating out there is this $28 million. Well, that is our bonding capacity. And I'm, sh I'm sharing that with you tonight so that if you get asked that question, it's not what we're planning to spend on a new project. It is what, as you all know, what your bonding capacity is set at that one third of your assessed value um, times 2%. That's where that number has come from. And I've, I'm sharing with you something that can be directly from our planning folks that um, show you where that number has come from. And it's not what the cost of the project is. We're far from knowing what that is. And I, can guarantee it's not going to be this amount because that would put us in straits of having no ability to do any bonding for any of our projects. Um, I think I'm going to stop right here, see if you have any questions specifically that I can answer. If you need some more background information I don't have tonight, I'd be happy to give it to you individually, but should we open it up for questions? Uh, <coughs> I don't know how you want to handle that. Well, I'll take the lead for just a minute and then seeing that it doesn't take action by me, it's up to you guys. Then. We're going to leave it up to you to, to lead the conversation and decide whether you open it up for public hearing, which I was in favor of public involvement. But uh, a couple of things I will be on record on, though, that is when um, I heard about this potential project that may be coming back downtown, um, I did agree to meet with uh, some of the members of the library board and the community that were involved in this process. And the fact that they came to us knowing that we were working on a new gateway plan is, is why they contacted, um, contacted us back about six months ago. Um, want to know was there a part they could play in the gateway was there a part they could play in downtown revitalization and redevelopment seeing that they were looking about where they were wanting to go and was there a place downtown that it would even fit and I think those are questions they're still wrestling with uh, but um, I personally as, as mayor have offered my support to at least taking those steps to find out if it would work and how it would work uh, matter of fact uh, I can find daily journal articles that showed me 30 years ago with a wearing a jacket saying save our library and keep it downtown so I, I always did think a library belonged downtown so that's not a change of, of thoughts for me um, in in question about the building and land they have now I've noticed some comments uh, on that in, in in the process that they did come downtown we know the parking is going to be critical and we are hoping that the, when the county uh, figures out what they're going to do for their space the goal, would, the goal that I've hoped for, and it may or may not happen, would be that we can work together to solve the parking issue with the right type of parking garage like Columbus is doing downtown right now. If anybody hasn't been to Columbus, it's well worth the trip to see what they're doing downtown. They're getting ready to add another 700 uh, parking spaces, so they, they are seeing that it fits very well in, in, in spurring development. Uh, but anyhow, the current site they have, <coughs> I believe, offers potential to the college, and I believe it also offers tremendous potential to the, to the city 
and possibly doing some trading back and forth for senior services for potential expansion of, of um, the Beeson Hall and maybe freeing up space in our in our current public building for more recreational uses by moving the catering part to a different building. So, and if that happened, we would need the same ground that you've already purchased for extension of parking for the facility to work for us. So the extra ground that you've purchased would not be wasted if we were the buyer because we would need it anyway. Um, in those conversations, I challenged uh, Bev and her board is the one thing I think is important right now is, is that uh, the tax rate to service the bonds didn't put an extra burden on taxpayers. Uh, we've been assured that this particular bond issue would not, and if they decided to go with bonds to build something, that there again they would stay within the budget levy that they already are using. That to me is another potential plus. Uh, doesn't mean that you're still not spending money to buy it and build it because you are. But uh, so anyhow, I just want to say that if they can stay within their constraints, and then the big key is figuring out operating costs because as we know in the city, we are going to lose some of our. Um, cat, it's not cat, Janet. Give me the right word. Um, um, certified shares. Certified shares. Uh, as we pay off bonds that we have outstanding and issue new bonds, like if our, if our park pays off <coughs> and our city police department pay off, those are old bonds that were written under different rules. The new bonds that are issued under the new rules will not share in those share uh, in those distributed shares. So figuring out how you pay for the upkeep and maintenance and staffing, I think, becomes key as they move through this process. I, I think they'll have to be able to show the public how they're going to staff it, but that's a whole other issue for a different day. But I just want to be on record saying that long as those things can be worked out that I personally um, am, am supportive of the concept of moving forward at least to see if it fits and works. And open it up to council. 